Fahrenheit at Hershey Park opened as the world's steepest roller coaster. This is a unique Intamin roller coaster combining a little bit of everything. It has a steep drop, a few airtime moments, and six inversions. However, the rise often overshadowed by Hershey Park's other two Intamins, but is that a fault of Fahrenheit? I don't think so. In this video, I will review Fahrenheit and explain why this is one of Intamin's most underrated roller coasters. After the 2007 season, Western Shootout water slides were slated for removal from Hershey Park. Located in Pioneer Frontier, this was a relatively compact footprint for a large scale roller coaster. But shortly after the water slide's closure, Hershey Park started one of the most complex and mysterious viral marketing campaigns in the history of the amusement industry. The root of the marketing campaign was a fake company called Nantami, which was an anagram of Swiss manufacturer Intamin. A fake website was created, along with a long trail of breadcrumbs, puzzles, and word ciphers. The buzz around this marketing campaign was immense. The website received over 34,000 hits, and Hershey Park's mysterious new ride was the talk of the coaster community. After weeks of teasing, Fahrenheit was announced on September 27, 2007. The coaster would feature a 121-foot, or 37-meter tall vertical lift, and a record-breaking beyond vertical plunge with a max angle of descent of 97 degrees. But Fahrenheit would not hold the steepness record for long. Fahrenheit opened in May of 2008, but just two months later, Indiana Beach opened Steel Hog, the prototype El Loco coaster, with a 111 degree first drop. Unlike a lot of major parks that received aero multi-loopers in the 1970s and 1980s, Hershey Park never did. They had an intimate accelerator coaster in Storm Runner that took riders upside down three times, a B&M invert in Great Bear that took riders upside down four times, and a Facoma boomerang in Sidewinder that took riders upside down six times. So Fahrenheit was a welcome addition to the park to give the park another multi-looper. Fahrenheit is an incredibly compact coaster, and the ride looks dazzling with its bright orange track and delightfully twisted layout. The coaster is located in Pioneer Frontier, but it really doesn't fit in with the area. It has no western theming, nor any theming for that matter. Fahrenheit routinely is one of the longest lines in all of Hershey Park. The ride features short, three-car trains, seeing a maximum of 12 riders per train. The ride usually runs all three trains, but the ride almost always double stacks. Dispatches on this coaster are painfully slow. As a result, I strongly recommend riding this coaster within the first hour of the day before it starts building up a line. Even on quiet days, this ride usually sports a half hour wait minimum. On busy weekends, the line can easily exceed 60 or 90 minutes, and it usually moves painstakingly slow. The queue is a sea of switchbacks in the middle of the ride, which do offer some great vantage points of the ride. When Fahrenheit originally opened, there was barely any shade in the queue line, but thankfully, the trees the park have planted have started growing in to block the sun on hot days. From 2008 to 2015, Fahrenheit had hard over-the-shoulder restraints, similar to the ones found on King Dakot Six Flags Great Adventure. For the 2016 season, Fahrenheit received an upgrade. The hard straps were replaced by soft straps. These eliminated the chance of painful neck chopping during the ride's aggressive maneuvers, even though headbanging wasn't really an issue on the ride to begin with. I think the soft straps are an upgrade for the most part, but the straps do come really close to your head. So when the restraints release at the end of the ride, they will try to remove glasses. I always have to turn my head 90 degrees to the side to prevent my glasses from being hit. I also have two other minor issues with Fahrenheit's restraints. One, I'm not a fan of the seat molds on this generation of the Intamin trains. Two, the lap bar portion of the restraint is not the most comfortable because it's a large cylinder perpendicular to your lap. Neither ruins the ride for me, they're just minor inconveniences. In terms of seat selection, I prefer the back row on Fahrenheit. That's mostly so you can experience the first drop at its full potential. Once dispatched, you round a 90 degree turn and head up the vertical lift. Unlike some of the Gerslauer Eurofighters where you start slowing down at the top, you get thrown over the 97 degree first drop on Fahrenheit and this is easily the highlight of the ride. Up front, you get a good pop of airtime due to the drop steepness, but the drop is extra special in the back row. Almost every Beyond Vertical drop delivers strong ejector airtime. 
but usually those rods have really short trains, like even shorter than Fahrenheit's. With Fahrenheit's 3 car train, the drop delivers an incredibly intense moment of ejector airtime the whole way down. It is one of my favorite drops on any coaster. That's followed by the Norwegian loop, which is a really interesting element. It starts off as a dive loop. The version itself doesn't really stand out, but the pullout is very intense. It slams you with positive G's, especially if you're riding up front. If I'm up front, I usually start graying out here. The second half of the Norwegian loop is an Immelman that finishes really high in the air. Like the dive loop, the inversion itself is nothing special, but what follows is. The end of the Norwegian loop drops back down to the ground and it delivers some sustained floater airtime if you're in the back car. That is followed by a cobra roll. It's not a particularly snappy or forceful one. What stands out most about this element is the nasty rattle. For the most part, Fahrenheit is a very smooth coaster. However, the train shuffles constantly through the cobra roll in the approach to the first corkscrew. It's quite jarring compared to the rest of the ride. While the first four inversions aren't standouts, the final two corkscrews sure are. These corkscrews are taken at breakneck speeds, and the whip through these corkscrews is unbelievable. They are very disorienting. I know the coaster's top speed is 58 miles per hour, or 93 kilometers per hour, and it's attained at the base of the first drop, but the ride's second half feels significantly faster because of how compact and tight the elements get. Those corkscrews are followed by a speedy and moderately forceful turn, and then comes a wonderful surprise, a powerful bunny hill that delivers intense ejector airtime throughout the entire train. That hill feels like it belongs on an Intamin mega coaster rather than a multi-looper. It's that strong. You then loop around a low turn and then rise up into the brake run ending the ride after traversing 2,700 feet or 823 meters of track. Fahrenheit really finishes strong so you hit the brake run breathless. And you will be sitting there for quite some time while you wait for the two trains ahead of you to be dispatched. In terms of pacing, Fahrenheit is pretty good and the ride seems to get stronger as it goes. The ride has very little downtime in between elements. The only weakness in this coaster's layout is that the first four inversions don't have any real power to them while they're inverting you. So what would I rate Fahrenheit? I would give this unique Intamin an 8 out of 10. This is a very solid coaster. I absolutely love the insane first drop and relentless second half. The Norwegian loop is also pretty good in the parts where you're not actually inverting, which is weird to say about an inversion. My biggest issues with Fahrenheit are the Ratley Cobra Roll and the slightly uncomfortable trains but the ride is ultimately an intense and fun coaster that combines some airtime moments with inversions. It is my least favorite of the three Intamins at Hershey Park, but it's still an excellent fit in the park's lineup, and it's my fourth favorite coaster in the entire park. So those are my thoughts on Fahrenheit. Have you been on this coaster? How do you think it compares to Hershey Park's other rides? I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and you consider subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amuse park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.